In this video, we want to continue to look at how to prove or verify trig identities. Now, we will be flipping back and forth with these fundamental trig identities and kind of assuming that we know these or understand these or at least at the bare minimum have this paper or have these written down in front of us so we can refer to them to help us use these to verify our trig identities. Now, if you remember, the first thing with verifying trig identities is you want to really divide this down the middle. Because really, the idea of how you want to verify these trig identities is you want to work on one side or the other, but not do back and forth. So you don't want to add a number to both sides or divide both sides by something. Now, in this case, tangent of theta equals cotangent of theta, tangent squared theta. So what I'm going to do here is I am going to change cotangent to 1 divided by tangent. And as you look at these, it just takes some practice and think about, okay, what am I trying to get? On the left side over here is just tangent. So if I only have one uh, trig function, just tangent, I'm going to try to convert everything over here to that same thing. And then I can see I have 1 over tangent times tangent squared. This tangent on the bottom is going to cancel with one of the tangents on top. And I'm left with just tangent of theta equals tangent of theta. So some of the simpler ones like this, you are able to just work on one side and then you have proved the identity. As we look at some of these, there'll be a little bit more involved where you may have to do a little bit of work on both sides to help solve. Let's try another one. Secant of x sine squared of x plus cosine of x equals secant of x. Now, one of the good rules of thumb when you're unsure what to do, and it always works, it just sometimes might take a little bit more time, is to just convert everything to sine and cosine. People feel more comfortable with sine and cosine. They know the basic trig identity, sine squared plus cosine squared is 1, and it just makes it a little bit easier. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to convert secant to 1 over cosine. Now, I know I just said in the last example that we have secant on the one side, so why wouldn't we just want to try to convert everything to that? And there's just too much going on here for that. So I'm going to get to here, and we want to think of this as sine over 1. So now if I write this as a single fraction, this is sine squared over cosine squared plus now, anytime you see a fraction, you want to think, okay, I need to get common denominators to combine those. So if I get common denominators over here, we think of this as cosine over 1. I'm going to multiply by cosine over cosine. And then that will give me sine squared. Plus over here, I get cosine and cosine is cosine squared. And then all over my common denominator, which is cosine. Now, from here, you can see the top is sine squared plus cosine squared. And we know all of that is just 1. So we are left with 1 over cosine, which that is what secant is equal to. And we have verified this identity. Now, you could have changed 1 over cosine to secant and then ended up with secant of x and not done anything on the right side. That would also work. So one of the things about these problems is there's not one set way that you have to do them. Um, there's other ways you could do this. You could do this by trying to convert this to, you know, 1 minus um, cosine squared, for example. So let's look at that, for example, and a different way you could tackle this problem. It still works, but it's just important for you to understand there's more than one way to do many of these problems. So here I have secant, and I am going to change sine squared to 1 minus cosine squared plus cosine. 
Now I distribute this here. And so this gives me secant of X minus secant of X cosine of X. Now my secant is one over cosine times cosine squared. And maybe you can start to see what's gonna happen here. Um, right here, this cosine cancels with that cosine, which just gives me minus cosine plus cosine. And I still have the secant here out in front. Those two cancel. And I get secant equals secant. So that shows you that in these two problems, there's two different ways of getting the answer. Now, some people don't like that because they want one way to do a problem, and that's the one way you do it, and you get it right, and it's always the same. And these problems don't work that way. There's multiple ways that you can do these sometimes to get the right answer. What's going to happen is you're going to start some way sometimes and get a step in and realize that's completely the wrong way to go. You convert things to sines or cosines or tangent or whatever you do, you switch things around and you realize, okay, that doesn't help. You're going to need to erase, start over and try again. And that's okay. Um, you know, I give somewhat a false impression when I do it here that I just go right through and do these. I've done these for a long time. And uh, I kind of, you know, have that advantage. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do a problem. You're going to get so far. And then you're going to realize, wow, that didn't work. I need to start over. That's okay. That is okay when that happens. Let's look at another one. Remember, when you're trying to decide which side to start on, you're usually going to start on whatever side looks more complicated. Okay. Now, when you have something like this, you have sine times cosine. It's kind of hard to see maybe where to go with this. I can maybe change this to 1 minus cosine squared. But if I notice on the top, my first step here is going to be to factor out the sine. Now, one of the questions when you look at these is you're like, well, how did you know to do that? How do you know to factor out the sine? Well, one of the things that kind of gives it away that you kind of want to look at is, okay, where am I trying to go? No fraction over here. So I'm trying to cancel this bottom sign out to get rid of it. Well, if I factor out a sign in the top, I can cancel those and I get just cosine plus sine, which is what I'm trying to get. So sometimes it's a matter of knowing, okay, what do I got? Where am I trying to go to try to figure out how to verify it. Now, some of you may be looking at this and think, well, I'm dividing by sine and there's a sine in everything up here. So couldn't I just divide sine out of everything and get sine plus cosine? Well, really that's the same thing we did when we factor out the sine. We just kind of did it in an extra step by pulling this out in front. But by canceling everything, you're doing the exact same thing. So here's another one. So in this one, my first thought as I look at this problem is I think, you know what? This one minus secant up here looks really familiar. I know there's that one plus and minus, those fundamental trig identities I have. So as I look over here, I want to see, okay, one, go back to what it is, one minus secant squared is going to equal to what? So as I go back here, I don't have a one minus secant squared. But if I kind of look at these two right here, one plus tangent squared is secant squared, I can think of that. And I know one plus tangent squared is equal to secant squared. Now that's not exactly what I have right here, but that's close. And so the question is, can I take this identity here and make it look like that? Well, if I subtract the secant over, that will give me one minus secant squared. And then if I subtract the tangent to the other side, I will get one minus or minus 
tangent squared. So one minus secant squared is really negative tangent squared. So I'm going to use that identity here. And the reason I saw that, or let me use my theta like I have up here. The reason I saw that was because this one minus this trig function squared looks really similar to all of these Pythagorean identities down here. So these Pythagorean identities are kind of in that form, so I can refer to those to kind of help me think about what I should do. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert everything to sine and cosine. When all else fails, convert everything to sine and cosine. So tangent squared is sine squared over cosine squared. And then on the bottom, secant squared is 1 over cosine squared. Now, you may be able to cancel here, and you may see it that the cosines are going to cancel. If you don't, let me write it over here. When you divide fractions, you flip and multiply. So I would flip the bottom and get cosine squared over 1. And from there, you can see the cosines cancel. So I'm left with minus sine squared of theta which if you scroll up, that's what I had originally, minus sine squared. And so we have finished minus sine squared theta. So going over these other examples, going over these problems is just some more practice. This is a, this is a section, this is a concept here by using these fundamental trig identities that just takes practice. It takes doing these a few times to start to see the patterns, to see how to use our trig identities to verify or prove these identities. So hopefully this helps um, as you continue on with the homework over 6.6 .6 trig identities, uh, the second part.